There we go. All right. So I want you to go with me to, he is called the weeping prophet. And those of you who are in the word will know exactly who I'm, who I'm talking about. The weeping prophet is Jeremiah. So go to Jeremiah chapter 30. While you are turning to chapter 30 of Jeremiah, we're going to spend a bit of time there. And in chapter 31, a couple of verses we're going to read. You will see that I advertised it as the five actions of God towards you in 2024. I'm actually glad that I made a mistake with the date because Sarita pointed out to me that I made a mistake with uh, not the date, the time that I made it for nine o'clock this morning. <laughs> That's gone. So, but for the uh, 1900 hours this evening, which is where we are at right now. So I could put that in there that what is it that what are the five actions of God towards you uh, in 2024, right here at the outset of this new year? Before we carry on now, I want to just bring to your attention that I, I know we've said this. It's important again to repeat this, that we need to reflect back on a word that was given that has already started being fulfilled so that you can be encouraged that the words that the Spirit of God speak to us on and on a Sunday night and just through us as vessels, we are only vessels, that when it starts being fulfilled already, when it was just uttered, we need to share it with you so that you can be uplifted to know that you're in the right place <laughs> at the right time with the right people going in the right direction. Amen to that. Last Sunday night with the prophetic, you will remember there was a very, very strong word where the Holy Spirit prompted me and then reminded me to say it. And it came out strong and rightfully so. Where the word that came out was that the Father from John 4, 24, you can just write these things down. If you were not online last Sunday night and you haven't listened to that prophetic message yet, please write the scripture reference down. John 4, 24. Now, John 4, 24 is the scripture that says, for the, for, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. Those who will worship him in, and I know you know it, say it with me. Those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Exactly that. Then the word came out from the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Where he said that he is not pleased with worship that is going out that is not from the spirit. In other words, it's just perfect performances on stages and the Holy Spirit is not smiling on that in 2024 and we got a strong word from the Lord that he is not going to accept that worship why and we're going to elaborate on that a little bit because it is strange smoke it is foreign incense it's not kingdom incense guys and it, it's not pleasant before the throne of God and God is bringing us back, and you'll see that oh, what the Lord has given tonight, how that he is bringing us back to the heart of worship. You know, in the world, we have this statement, and I felt it in my spirit now to say it to you because you're going to relate to it. In the world, we say, do yourself a favor. <laughs> Don't we use that on a regular basis? Hey, listen, do yourself a favor. Go and watch that movie. Do yourself a favor and go over there to that resort or to that lodge. It's absolutely awesome. We talk like that. And I'm going to use that phrase and I'm going to bring it into kingdom dynamics now. Do yourself a favor and get into the place where you get to the basics again of worshiping the Lord. I spoke to a brother the other day as well. There is some amazing worship. Guys, there they are, they are artists out there. One of them, I just want to mention his name, is Jeremy Riddle. If you haven't been listening to Jeremy Riddle, <laughs> do yourself a favor. <laughs> because you will do yourself a favor. Because the flavor, we spoke about it this morning in the message. <clears throat> there's going to be favor and flavor on your life. Also in one of the teachings that went, on, uh, went out for the Alive and 55 group. Do yourself a favor to get the flavor again of true worship in the presence of God. Listen to Jeremy Riddle 
from the place where there is worship flowing, where it's intimate worship. Now, you will recognize the artists. You will pick it up in your spirit, the ones that you can listen to. Guys, and I know a lot of you are sensitive to this. I am exceptionally sensitive to it. And I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this to myself. I'm just saying I'm very, very sensitive to worship, whether it is from the Spirit of God or whether it's just performers who got onto the stage and they are musicians and they performed praise and worship. Because true worshipers are worshipers before they are musicians. Did we get that? Now listen to this. You do not need anybody to pump you up in a church service so that you can warm up to praise the Lord. Where on earth do we get that from? You are a worshiping vessel unto the Lord. Worship should be throughout your entire day, not just conversational prayer with God, but you should be in that place. Father, I honor you and worship you. I glorify you. Jere, ek maak die naam groot in my leven. Mag die naam verheerlik word. That should be throughout your day. Do you know that when you do that and you get into a church service where the people of God have congregated for celebration, when you walk in there, you don't need any pumping up because <laughs> you're already pumped up on the inside. And you will just start expressing your, your heart and your life to him through praise and through worship. Now, with that said, when that word was spoken last Sunday night, I was horrified when I saw on social media, and I'm so glad I saw it. Now, there are churches now, we must point out, especially America, where they are now getting in, <clears throat> listen to this, very well-known professional DJs who are not necessarily worshipers. They're coming into these churches, and the one that I saw was a massive congregation. And they have this very, very well-known artist who is a singer. A lot of people know him. And he's a very well-known DJ. And he brought his music, and he played worldly music in the church. And everybody was dancing to it, including the pastor, on the platform. If you see the lyrics to that particular song, because there's one guy that said, hold on, what is going on here? A young chap took it upon himself to take that recording and then put it on social media and then talk about it. A young chap, he, I don't even think he's 30. And he says, what is going on? And when I saw that, the spirit of, oh, I, I feel it all over me tonight. The spirit of God said to me, son, that is what I mentioned on Sunday night. In the same week after it was uttered, I saw it. Do you know what? There's going to be more of that. Because what has happened is the deceiver has come in. He who masquerades as an angel of light has penetrated and infiltrated the body of Christ with worldly music merging the body of Christ supposed to be and the world in one on a stage of performance. Here, help us. Mensa, we cannot see a world change and come to Jesus when the world doesn't know the difference between that and that, between the world and the DJs on stage playing their worldly music with their worldly lyrics and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ being sung by the people of God in the congregations. So it's already rolling out and it's going to increase and God is not smiling on it. So 
coming back to you. What about you? You are going to be challenged again tonight. Jy gaan uitgedaag word weer vanavond, dier die gees van God. And the challenge is going to be this. There are five things that the Lord showed me that he's busy doing in our lives at the start of 2024. Want die Heere weet wat ons deur is in 2023. He knows what we've been through. He's been there. He was there. Now he's taking you and he's doing this thing in your life. Please take notes tonight and write these things down. First of all, write this down. God is the God of restoration. I'm going to talk to you tonight about five R words that the Lord shared with me. Number one is recover or then restore. Recover slash restore. Write that on your page. And I know by now you have found Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 17. I'm going to read it. Then I'm going to give you just a bubble overview of that particular chapter and where we are finding ourselves in this chapter to give you context. The scripture reads like this. For I will restore, God speaking, I will restore health to you. Now, I want you to hear this. The Spirit of God wants you to get into a program where you are going to start looking after your physical health. God will restore your health, but you need to maintain it. God has called this ministry to be not only ministering in the area of the spirit and mind dynamics with biblical psychology and emotional intelligence from the word of God, but also in natural health. Look after your body in 2024. It's an admonition from the spirit of God. Why? Because you need to be strong physically for the work that needs to be done in this year. I want to encourage you to do that. He doesn't stop there. Listen to this. He says, and I will heal your wounds, says the Lord. And this is not talking about physical wounds, although he'll heal those. But he's talking about two different kinds of health here. The first one, he wants you to operate in radiant health in your physical body. And he'll restore you. That's what he says. But then he's going to also heal your wounds. What kind of wounds, Lord? Listen, I have it marked in my Bible here in red. That's anything that is that was done to you, anything that, that we shouldn't do as Christians that are marked in red in my Bible. There it is in red there. At the bottom. Because they have called you, and I'm just going to bring it into the modern world that we are in right now. Because they have called you names. The Spirit of God just revealed to me that there are people listening tonight. Jy sit nou daar jy luister na my nee. But you've been called things that were not nice. Things that have been said to you that were so derogatory and so condescending and so hurtful. You are sitting there and you're listening to me now. And the Spirit of God is saying to me, to say to you, listen carefully, He's going to restore you. He's going to heal you. He's going to help you. He's going to lift you up. And he's going to, tonight we're doing it. He's going to cancel every single thing that was said about you and against you that was not from the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit says, do it right now. Okay. I've gotten, this is his service. Those of you who have been very, very hurt by things that were said to you. Recently, perhaps, but in the past. And sometimes you are reminded of it. Because the devil will do that. That's the game that he plays. He will remind you of the things that people called you. That stop for not. It ends right here. Because the righteous indignation of God is fired up on the inside of me. I can sense it. I can feel it. And 
all of what was spoken over you, we're going to neutralize it now and call it to nothing in Jesus' name. You ready? I want you where you are seated in your home right now. Put your hand on yourself. Put your hand on your forehead. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, right now we cancel every single word that was spoken against us and to us. Names that we were called. We felt like outcasts. We were marginalized. We were ostracized. We were brought down by the words of people. Right now, as we lay hands on ourselves, we neutralize all of those words that were spoken. We cancel them in Jesus' name. All of those things that were spoken us over us, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. And now we only accept what is true about us and what flows from the very lips of Jesus. Right now we receive the affirmation from the throne of God that we are valuable and precious in the sight of God. Now say that about yourself. I am valuable and precious for and to my father. I'm valuable and precious to my father. My father loves me. I'm affirmed by my father, accepted by my father, approved of by my father and acknowledged by him. You said that, you prayed that, amen. So this was where God said, I will restore your health. I will restore your emotional health. That's why we prayed that prayer now, what the Holy Spirit wanted us to do. Because he says, they've called you an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no one seeks after and for whom no one cares. And you know what I say when it comes to a scripture like this. And the Lord says, Azert. And God, God turns the whole thing around for your good. Why? Because you wrote it down on your page. He's the God of restoration. So there it is right there. God is restoring you in the new year in 2024. That's only the first thing that he's doing. Listen carefully. There's more. What the Lord does, we are going to jump around a little bit in these two chapters. I know you don't mind. It's the word of God. You know, sometimes <laughs> when you are snacking, you eat something here. Yeah, I love buffet things where you can snack a bit there and eat a bit there. And then you feel less for that. And pardon the terrible English. And then you feel less for eating. But that's the way we talk as South Africans in any way. Then you go and eat something. Then it's a, And you're nibbling. And this is what we're doing. But we're putting it all together nicely for you tonight. The next one is there is, God, listen to this, a revelation of himself. All these words start with R. So recover and restore now a revelation, revelation of God himself. This is so important because when you are restored and you are being recovered by the spirit of God because of what happened in the past and you've got a new beginning, God reveals himself to you in who he is in his person. Woo, glory. Yes, I'm excited. So what? I'd rather be excited in the kingdom of God than something that's just a fleeting fantasy and it just it's over in a jiffy. No, no, no. This is lasting. And I'm going to get worse. <laughs> or shall I say better? The next one is God reveals himself. He actually comes and he shares who he is in verse 22 of the same chapter. Watch this. He is saying now, then you will be my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the tempest of the Lord has gone forth with wrath, a sweeping and gathering tempest. It shall, it shall whirl and burst upon the heads of the wicked. So now he's saying to you, I will reveal myself to you. I will be your God, and I will be for you, my people. That's what he's saying. Now go to the next chapter. If, if you can't go so fast, just write it down. Uh, chapter 31, verse 3. Lord, may I not get stuck on this verse, because <laughs> this, this is one of those where you, you, know, you pitch your tent, you camp with this one. And you bring out your flask with coffee. You put up your feet. You let your hair down and you take a sip of coffee. And now, you visit with this verse. Mark it in your Bible. Jeremiah 31.3. The Lord appeared from old to me. That is, of course, in the Amplified Bible. Of old to me. That's Israel. God is speaking to the whole nation. 
But in this year, 2024, he's speaking to us as the church and he's speaking to you individually because we are all members of the one body. And he is saying, yes, I have loved you. Now, you, your name tonight, Marty, Renee, Desiree, Peter, Victor, uh, Alvin, Marty, Zan, put your name in there. I have loved you with an, say it, everlasting love. Before the foundation of the world, the Lord already loved you. He loves you now. He will forever love you. There's nothing you can do to stop the love of God reaching you. Hallelujah. Go read Romans chapter 8 from verse 30 onwards. What shall separate you from the love of God? There's nothing that can separate you from his love. He adores you. It gets better. You say it can get better than that. Oh, yeah. Watch. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Oh, man. Oh. You know. There are a lot of times that the women understand this better than the men. Us guys, sometimes, you know, we struggle with these. You know, I've drawn you with my love and my loving kindness. But you know, Ben, the men who are online tonight, you need to get to that place, men, where you so experience his love, that you so fall in love with him and everything that you are as a man. You know, we need those men. We need men in the body of Christ. I listened to somebody talk about that today. We need men on the, in the body of Christ who will be men. I'm talking about a man because I believe manhood and Christ-likeness are synonymous. Do we always get it right? We don't. We fall and we fail. But we get up and we try again. Being a male is a matter of birth. Being a man is a matter of choice. So he says, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. It still gets better. And continued my faithfulness to you. God's been faithful to you. He has not once, not ever, dropped his faithfulness because of your sin. Because of things that you've done. Where you fell on your face in sin. His faithfulness is what carried you and is still carrying you tonight. The Bible says it's not the judgment. Listen, it's the goodness of God that draws you into repentance. The Heere wil weet dat vanaan, hy het vir jou so lief hier in 2024. That's why he's restoring you. Natural health, emotional health. Now he's revealing who he is to you so that you can feel safe and secure and steadfast and strong on the foundation who is the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. Woo, glory. You need to grab this tonight and stand on it. You are not going to be moved. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, glory. There's an anointing that the Holy Spirit is pouring on this tonight. Number three. Is resolved. We had number one, recover, restore. Number two, a revelation of himself. Number three, resolve. I'm not just talking about to resolve something. Om iets uit te sorteer. Not referring to that. This resolve that the Lord gave, it does mean to solve things, yes. And he will do that with you and for you and he'll help you. But... Also, it means to decide who, come on, to decide firmly on the course set before you and putting action to it. This now waar jou gedeelte inkom. Die Heere gaan vir jou restaureer. Hy gaan homself aan jou openbaar. Maar die derde ding wat jy moet doen, is you need to get to that place where you take action. Because then it, when you take action, these things are activated. Can I say that again? 
when you take action, these things that we are talking about tonight gets activated. It starts off. It's a process that we don't want to for you. And it happens in the spirit and it will manifest in the natural at the right time for you. Because too many times we get impatient, we operate and we start in the spirit, but we get impatient and we say, where is it? Where is it, Lord? I want to see the manifestation of that in the, in the natural. You just have to keep on keeping on with this whole thing. So what did we say? It's resolved. To decide firmly on a course that you need to take with the Lord, of course, of course, the course. <laughs> and then to take action. Number four, very strong one. Oh, Mensa, if, if I was a coach now of a rugby team and it's halftime and my team that I'm coaching is behind I will give them a pep talk. I am a motivator. I will stand in that changing room and I will stand there and I will give them a pep talk. I will encourage my guys and I will say, come on, it's not over. You can go out there and you can win this game and you are going to win this game because it's within you to win it. And the fourth word is called resilience. Resilience means to bounce back. If you have experienced a setback or setbacks, it is time to bounce back. <laughs> and the bounce back is always greater than the setback. Because the one who's helping you to bounce back is very powerful and strong. And he can hold you up. The Bible says a righteous man may even fall seven times, but he gets up again. So resilience. Have you got resilience? Have you got bounce back? Yes, you have, because it's on the inside of you. Do you hear the cloud sit for you? So resilience. Jeremiah 31, verse 4. Watch this. You remember now in 30 verse 17, God says he'll restore you. Now, we are going to look resilience and the next word in line that is coming. It's going to help you to understand how to bounce back. Look what God says to her. In verse 4, again, I will build you and you will be built. <laughs> it's like somebody saying to you, I will help you and you will be helped. I will guide you and you will be guided. I will assist you and you will be assisted. This is actually what he's saying. Do you know that God makes things so clear? When you discern it in your spirit, because your spirit knows all of these things. Your spirit is aware of it. Because your spirit is alive unto the things of God. You just need to feed all of these things in all the time. But he is now saying, I will build you and you will be rebuilt. God only rebuilds what is being restoring. Restoration comes before rebuilding. Why? Because it's now the process of re-establishing you. Then he says, O virgin Israel. She wasn't a virgin. Israel slept around with the other nations. When you go read chapter 30, that's why I said I want to just quickly and above all refer to that. She was promiscuous Israel Judah promiscuous messed around with the other nations and God says in my restoration and rebuilding program Israel you'll be a virgin again you will again be adorned with your here it comes with your timbrels the small one-headed drums and go forth in the dancing, in the chorus of those who make merry. Why? It's a celebration. Because God has restored. Now he's rebuilding. Now you're in a place where the presence of God is prominent. And you can dance before the Lord. Now you'll see 
in this portion of scripture here. You'll see in, in verse 19 of the, again, guys, you can listen to this afterwards. I know I'm going a bit fast. Don't worry about the verses. You can read this. Excuse me. You can listen to this again and go read them. Verse 19 of chapter 30. Out of them, city and palace, will come songs of thanksgiving and the voices of those who make merry. Hallelujah. And now the rebuilding. Here it is. The rebuilding in verse 19 of 30. I will multiply them and they will not be few. I kind of figure out that mathematics by myself. If God, if God says, I'm going to multiply you, it means it's not going to be few. <laughs> it's not going to be a little. Like, I've got that one, Lord. But, you know, he makes it simple for us. Then he carries on. He says, I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. <laughs> How many of you know, when God does it, he does it big. That's why the enemy thinks right now with the way that he's doing things big and he's, he's, he's showing himself and he's parading on the stages of life. Really. Just you wait. It's coming. <laughs> 60,000 people in Atlanta, Georgia at the Passion Conference. 60,000 plus minus young people in a stadium Backed it out, singing a cappella worship unto the Lord. You know what that must have sounded like in heaven? The fragrance of that worship. I wish I was there. You're on, but you're not a young person. Is it? You should see me on the inside. <laughs> I would have danced for those young people in Atlanta, Georgia. We are going to see more of that. A lot more. Stadiums being filled with people worshiping Jesus. The sound of that. Why? Because it's in spirit and in truth. Because those young people who are worshiping there, it's not, look at the way I'm dressed. Oh, I, I'm hoping I look nice for the next person. No, 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 no. Clothed in worship garments. Where they made it all about Jesus. They made it all about Jesus. Not about my image. But the image of him. His awesomeness and splendor and majesty. And sovereignty. That's what that was all about. Jere, laat het gebeur in Zuid-Afrika. May it happen in South Africa. Do we ever need that? God then says from the resilience, the rebuild is number five. I've already spoken about that now. That's number five. Easy one. Rebuilding. You know, you know what I saw? In the spirit. When I wrote that down. The fifth one of rebuilding. I wrote it on my notes here actually. Where I wrote down. Yes sir. And I saluted him. Can't even tell you when lost. I have thought even about something like that. That's why I know it was the spirit of God. When he said son. I will build you and you will be rebuilt. It's like a soldier that came to attention and I saluted the brigadier or the admiral, the captain of the armies of the host of God, the armies of God, him, the king of kings, the Lord of glory, the mighty warrior Jesus. I saluted him and I said, yes, sir, I'm going to be rebuilt in 2024 are you going to be rebuilt in 2024 where you are in your home tonight raise your hand to him it's to him it's not to me it's not to a service it's not to a sermon it's not to a message to him lord i will be rebuilt in 2024 and i salute you sir my king 
Hallelujah. What happens after you've been rebuilt? What's the outflow of that? In verse 5 of 31, again, you shall plant vineyards. Here you go again. You see, he's reestablished you. There's no one ever begin. It's a new beginning. You will plant vineyards upon the mountains of Samaria. There will be produce. I'm just saying that there will be produce. The planters shall plant and make the fruit common and enjoy it undisturbed. We are going to eat the fruit of God's rebuilding process and what is busy establishing in your life with nobody interfering with us. Nobody that is going to disturb us because we're going to eat it undisturbed. For there shall be a day when the watchmen on the hills of Ephraim shall cry out, Arise and let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Anytime it talks about Zion, it's that place of worship. Yes, this was for Israel. Yes, this was for her to come back to her God. But this is the word that the Lord had given and laid upon my heart for us as the church in 2024. Do you remember when I shared the word for the new year or the words for the new year? This is a follow on to that. And I knew he was going to do it. I knew it. That's why it wasn't just one word. That's why it wasn't just what we can receive as a word at the beginning of the year with even the harvests, because the harvests are coming, guys. And the roar of the lion, remember that was part of it. The roar, it was used as an acronym. We are going to see these things roll out. And again, the word revelation was in there. Get ready for a revelation of the kingdom of God in and through your life in 2024. And I say a hearty amen to that. And I thank the Lord for this word that he had given. And that you were online tonight. And those of you are going to be watching this via YouTube. Grab a hold of this. It is for you. Take these five words of what the Lord wants to do and activate in your life right now. Don't wait for it. Muni Vachni, right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, don't forget, please. Those of you who want to go onto the, the, the team of Open Wind, Open Heavens, and it is open windows, really. Open Heavens for the fasting and prayer for next week. I'm going to put that link on all the groups for that book so that you can read it. You've got You've got a whole week, and it's easy reading. Grab a hold of it, and then we're going to send out the prayer list for next week's fast from next week, Monday, through to the Friday. Those of you who want to fast longer, it's up to you. Shorter, up to you, between you and the Lord. If you're already fasting now, praise the Lord. I pray that it go, will go well and strong with you during your fast. Amen. Is there anybody tonight? Uh, it's only fair. If, if something I said tonight stirred within your spirit, in your heart, I want to ask you two things. Please stay on point with the context of what we spoke about. And secondly, please don't make it too long because our time is already quarter to eight. Thank you. So I'm going to open it up for those who would like to perhaps share. So you can unmute yourself now. Your microphones uh, can be unmuted. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone tonight who feels... The Lord laid something upon your heart that you want to share with us as the group. Thank you, Lord. I'm never in a hurry for this. The Lord must do his thing. If he's spoken to you, then you can share it with us. Thank you, Lord. If not, I'm going to close the service because, as you know, we don't drag it out just for the sake of talking more. When it's finished, it's done. We close it off and we carry on. This word tonight. I feel encouraged. I feel, I really feel encouraged and strengthened by the Spirit of God lifting us tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our precious Father, I thank you tonight in Jesus' name for your might and splendor and majesty. Thank you that we, as vessels of God, just instruments in your hands, can subject ourselves. Submit ourselves, surrender to you, surrender under your mighty hand, and you lift us up in due time. Thank you that your process in our lives, it is a good process because it's the work of your hands. 
And thank you, Father, that we will let the, the progress be up to us by linking up with the speed that the Holy Spirit is moving in and through what we spoke about tonight. And I thank you for that. And I speak a blessing over every family represented tonight. There where you are in your home, not just for now, but for the rest of this year. Go out and do exploits in his name. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We love you guys. You are valuable and precious. We'll see you online next week. God bless.